I'd like to call the Mentor City Council regular meeting of Tuesday, October 3rd, 2017 to order. The invocation will be given this evening by Councilman Marn, after which he will call for a moment of silence for the victims and survivors of the Las Vegas tragedy. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day. Help us to use good judgment for the business at hand and guide us in wisdom with a continuing sense of truth and fairness for the community we represent. And now a moment of silence for the horrific tragedy that happened in Las Vegas. God bless to everyone involved, men, women, uh, armed services, and to future health. And even God bless the people that are giving blood to help those in need. Pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Here. Mr. Blake? Here. Mr. Donovan? Here. Mrs. Dowling? Here. Mr. Kirchner? Here. Mr. Krieger? Here. Mr. Landig? Here. Um, we have the approval of the minutes of the work session of September 9th, 2017. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. <coughs> Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. And the regular meeting of September 19th, 2017. Moved to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Yes. Um, we have a special presentation this evening. We have Representative Ron Young with us, and this is a very timely presentation. Mr. Filippia? Thank you, Madam President, members of council. And uh, sadly, the events of this week in Las Vegas have reminded us of the importance of of being prepared with our emergency response capabilities. Um, as Council is, is aware, we have been working for several years uh, on a plan to create and construct uh, at some point when funds were made available uh, a emergency response facility that would be located here in Mentor that would serve as a regional response center that would house a number of our specialty units and provide uh, link access to uh, key transportation infrastructure in the community, particularly uh, the Lost Nation Airport. I'm going to ask Chief Searles to talk a little bit about the importance of this facility and how it will serve the region. But um, it's important to point out that uh, it's been this, this project, while in the planning stages for many years, is, will now be able to go forward through assistance uh, with the state of Ohio that's been made possible through the efforts of our uh, state elected representatives, particularly Representative Young, who's joining us here today, and Senator Eklund, who cannot be with us here today. But we, of course, uh, have a great appreciation for those efforts uh, that will help make this possible. Chief Searles, please. Thank you, Mr. Flipback, members of council. Our region is well respected for our response capabilities and our ability to manage big deal or large scale events, uh, not just in the community, but in the region. Over the years, the city has uh, committed to a number of specialty vehicles. Uh, we've partnered with our neighbors, and we have uh, a number of vehicles that are spread throughout the city. This regional response facility will allow us to bring those vehicles together in one location for immediate response. Um, but more importantly, it'll allow us to uh, build the relationships that we have with our neighbors and have a, a, a more um, regional response um, on a strategic level that um, I think is going to benefit the community. Um, we're very appreciative of the award that we have. And um, the other thing that I'd like to give credit to is the working relationship that we have with all public safety disciplines throughout Lake County and within this region. Um, I'm very proud of the service that we have, and this facility will do more than just house vehicles. It's going to make us a stronger public safety response system. So thank you very much. Madam President, just went, would mention one other thing. Um, this is also made possible by uh, Council's leadership in creating uh, a much closer relationship and uh, partnership with the Lake County Port Authority, which, of course, this uh, building will actually be constructed upon through uh, our uh, a lease arrangement with them, of course, which would not be possible 
uh, without that linkage. So again, uh, some of the efforts that we've been working on over the years are starting to pay off and come together. Ron, would you like to come forward and make the presentation to the chiefs? Yeah. I'd just like to say that um, this was such a community effort, and I was just proud to be part of the team. Um, this project was first presented to me by most of you, in fact. Uh, I think I was pretty much ganged up on <laughs> by you guys, but you did a great job, very professional, and the need is obvious, particularly today. I really appreciated your prayer, Scott. Um, it is so critical that we have these types of responses available for our public servants, people that are willing to risk their lives for all of us, to give them the tools they need to respond expeditiously, particularly after what we just saw in Las Vegas and um, those horrific events. And I think this is this proper kind of reasonable preparedness is, is such a large part of the equation for this country and for Mentor and all of Lake County, in fact. So again, I'm just proud to be part of the team. Thank you. say one more thing very quickly uh, without the assistance of city manager Ken Filipiak at his persistence he drove, he drove down to Columbus and he would not let leadership go the Ohio House until they agreed that this was a good project so yes. love your persistence it's not always comfortable but it's not <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a public hearing this evening, ordinance number 17-0-95. Um, this public hearing is being held pursuant to notice duly published and posted according to law. Julie, please read the legislation. An ordinance amending Part 11, Title 5, Chapter 1162 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended and same relating to landscaping. Mr. Filippia. Thank you, Madam President, and I'm going to ask uh, Administrative <coughs> Services Manager Andy Rose to present this on behalf of the city. Thank you, Mr. Filippiak. Good evening, Madam President, members of council. The administration is recommending the <coughs> amending the landscaping code to include a provision that requires 50% ground cover on all developed residential lots. Our current ordinance uh, requires lots to have grass planted in the front setback, but it does not call out the specifics of how much is required. The new provision, which is a supplement to the landing code, requires 50% coverage in residentially zoned property, excluding driveway, sidewalks, porches. Um, in addition to the ground cover requirements, this ordinance also places a limitation on berms and mounds. Uh, the new requirement limits the height of berms and mounds to two feet above the finished grade and caps the berms and mound area to 20% of the total lawn area. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Okay, hearing none, council is in receipt of all correspondence received pertaining to this matter. The public hearing is adjourned. Thank you. New legislation, ordinance number 17-0-95. An ordinance amending Part 11, Title 5, Chapter 1162 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended, the same relating to landscaping. Mr. Filippi. Thank you, Madam President. I think Mr. Rose did a good job of indicating what the changes are. I want to thank the Law Department for working closely with the administration on this. And I, I think it's important to point out that this legislation really comes before you as a result of a number of uh, nuisance complaints we've had over the years which we've been unable to resolve because of a lack of clarity in our standards and I think everyone would agree that in our community it's important to have grass on our front and, and on our lawns and so that's something that we want I think it provides flexibility to provide suitable landscape areas 
Uh, but overall, I think it, it, it's, it's an effort to just uphold the standards that 99.9% .9 of our residents already maintain. I, I have a question. Um, are any, what would be non-conforming properties now, are they grandfathered or would they be required to comply with the new ordinance? <laughs> I don't have an answer oh, for that okay. right now. I mean, generally, um, generally, uh, whenever you pass a change to the zoning code, you, you are talking about grandfathering and uh, creating non-conforming uses. Um, I mean, obviously, you can't say, well, we're going to go to 40-foot setbacks, everybody, you know, move yeah. your house. <laughs> um, but, you know, there, there are exceptions, and I, I, I didn't anticipate your question, and I probably should have. Um, there are exceptions to that uh, sometimes as they can relate to things that aren't, uh, you know, they're, they're more health, safety, and welfare, welfare types of things, the, the police powers. Um, and, and so I can't answer that specifically on this. I mean, arguably, you know, the way it is now is, uh, you know, it, it's hard to change it, but there, there could be application. And so um, that's, uh, that's something I, you know, I can get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen? Uh, Madam Mr. President, Garner. yeah, I just, I was gonna ask the same thing about uh, the mounds that are over two feet high, if they were grandfathered in. So Richard basically answered that, thanks. Well, the, you know, I, I think, you know, it's a, it's a matter of uh, uh, the degree, okay? Um, whereas mounds, you know, that, that's, that's probably a little bit different than, you know, having uh, live uh, grass or ivy or, or what have you. So um, it's, it's just something I could take a look at and, and get a memo out to council on. Thank you. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Barn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Dowling? <coughs> yes. Mr. Kirstner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-95 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-96. An ordinance to authorize transfers of funds and revisions to appropriations and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filipiak. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Malinowski, please. Thank you, Mr. Filipiak. Members of council, this ordinance does two things. Firstly, <coughs> Uh, it authorizes two permanent cash transfers out of the city's general fund, uh, the first being for a little over $226,000 uh, relative to closing out the uh, bioretention brick paver project at the marina. And secondly, one and a quarter million dollars is uh, transferred in to fund our self-insurance health care fund. That <coughs> represents about one full quarter. We run about $5 million annually on the claims. And then the <coughs> second section of the ordinance uh, has several appropriation revisions, uh, primarily for a very small grant donation that was made, and uh, also to close out uh, or, or move money for uh, federal grants. And I recommend approval. Thank you. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Who do approve? Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-96 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-97. An ordinance to revise the codified ordinances of the city of Manor 2006 as amended by adopting current replacement pages and declaring an emergency. <coughs> Mr. Filipiak. I'll Mr. take this. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you see this three or four times a year. Uh, where we sweep all of the uh, legislation that you have previously passed of a permanent nature uh, and incorporate it into the Mentor Code of Ordinances, the Green Book, as I tend to call it. Um, and also, uh, we take any new enactments uh, from the state relative to the General <coughs> Offenses Code or the Traffic Code, and we pull those uh, revisions in also so that uh, we have them in our code. If there's any specific questions, I can try to answer them. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. 
Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-97 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-98. An ordinance declaring the improvement of certain real property located in the city of Menor to be a public purpose, declaring a portion of such property to be exempt from real property taxation, compensating the school district and the library district for revenue not realized, designating infrastructure improvements to be made that will benefit such <coughs> property, requiring annual service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippi. Thank you, Madam President. And this is, you generally, you see this once mm -hmm. a year. Uh, this is a legislation for uh, <coughs> tax increment financing, which we uh, will capture the value of improved properties for purpose of, sp of specific public improvements. Mr. Traub, what do we have uh, on this list for council this year? There are uh, 10 projects which are uh, identified on the second page after the uh, staff report with a uh, estimated construction value of approximately uh, $28 million. If there are any additional questions. Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marm? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landing? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-98 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-99. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Classic Ford of Mentor for the purchase of five 2018 Ford Utility Police Interceptor vehicles and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippiak. Thank you, Madam President. Chief Knight, please. Thank you, sir. Madam President, members of council, in the 2017 budget, money was set aside uh, to replace uh, five marked police vehicles and one administrative vehicle. Uh, the administrative vehicle was purchased earlier this year. Uh, the budget also includes not only the purchase price of the vehicle, but enough funds to upfit all of the vehicles. We'll be replacing five 2014 Ford <coughs> Interceptor, Police Interceptor Utility Vehicles that range in, uh, from 120,000 to almost 150,000 miles. Uh, these vehicles have been very dependable and have served us very well, and we're going to continue to get the same type of vehicle. Uh, the state bid for this year for these cars uh, was $31,686 per car. Uh, Classic Ford gave us a bid of $31,028 a car. Uh, I'd like to note they, they classic Ford of Menor normally beats the bid by by a small amount, but this year they uh, they beat it by uh, over six hundred and fifty dollars per car, so it's saving us almost thirty three hundred dollars on a vehicle purchase. It's my recommendation uh, that we purchase five uh, Ford Interceptor Police Utility Vehicles from Classic Ford of Menor for a total of one hundred and fifty five thousand. $140, and these are all 2018 models that we'll be getting. Move to suspend. Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. We'll do proof. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes, even though they're not the supercharged models. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-99 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-100. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Dell Inc. for a three-year Microsoft Enterprise volume licensing agreement under the State of Ohio Cooperative <coughs> Purchasing Program and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippi. Uh, Thank you, Madam President. I've asked our uh, uh, Chief Information Officer, Ali Sayan, to be here this evening to offer us some insight on to this uh, three-year <coughs> contract. Ali? Thank you, Mr. Filipiak and the members of Council. Uh, this order is primarily to renew our uh, uh, contract with Dell for another three-year term uh, for Microsoft Enterprise Licensing Agreement. Uh, Microsoft basically created Office 365 uh, Government Community Cloud, they also refer as a GCC, to cater exclusively for federal, state, and local governments, uh, specific needs. Therefore, our data is safe, uh, secure, and also uh, separate. 
uh, Office 365 also has the integration with our phone system. I was going to show you some images, but I think I learned <laughs> that not many people like to see it. But uh, White House already using our system. Proud to say that. And we have the same phone system that they have. Um, I think we are doing okay in that case. Um, uh, with the uh, basically um, uh, renewal of this sub subscription, we believe cost saving will continue, and I do recommend. Thank you. Madam President, I just had one comment to that. I, I, I think it's important to emphasize we went away from this is again one of these subscription services as opposed to purchasing licensing software licensing for each individual PC in our organization, and it's saved us money. But I think more importantly to uh, uh, Mr. Sand's point is that the uh, security upgrades that we have experienced with this are a dramatic upgrade. Every time um, Microsoft has an, uh, a software update, it's automatically incorporated into our, our pr the protection of our system. So it's been good for us and it's saved us money. So good on a lot of accounts. Great. Thank you. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marr? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-100 has been approved. Resolution number 17-R-123. A resolution naming the property located at 6842 Heisley Road as Springbrook Gardens Park. Mr. Fulhiak. The administration likes the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Move to suspend. Second. Second. <laughs> Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Resolution number 17-R-123 has been adopted. Second readings we have none. Third readings we have none. The manager's report. Thank you, Madam President, members of council. Effective October 23rd and running through the second full week of December, the number of yard waste units a resident may set out increases from the current 12 up to a uh, maximum of 25. And as a reminder, a unit is defined as a paper yard waste bag, a rigid container, or a bundle of brush. So you would like to thank the approximately 150 volunteers who removed over 1,600 pounds of garbage and debris from the Lake Erie shoreline at the Menor Lagoons over a four-day period last month as part of the Adopt-A-Beach international cleanup effort. Um, the third graders from the Mentor Public Schools will begin their safety visits to Mentor Safety Village uh, on Monday, October 9th, running through the 20th of the month. This is a cooperative safety program with the Mentor Police, Fire, Public Works, and Recreation Departments, as well as the Mentor Firefighters Historical Association and the Mentor Public School System. Safety Village program teaches uh, kids that age about home safety, litter prevention and recycling, and a number of other topics. On Wednesday, October 4th, members of the Police and Fire Department will be participating in the Safe Walk to School event with Sterling Morton, Orchard Hollow, Fairfax, and Hopkins Elementary Schools. The Mentor Avenue widening contractor has restriped the lanes on Mentor, Mentor Avenue to four narrow, narrower 10 and a half foot lanes, I'm sure some have noticed, to permit construction on the north side of Mentor Avenue. Uh, the contractor will be on site tomorrow to begin work on the north side of Mentor Avenue but two-way traffic will be maintained during the entirety of this construction. a &J Cement Contractors has resumed sidewalk replacement repairs on Midland Road today. Work is expected to be complete by the end of the week, and this, will, this is sidewalk work, and that will complete uh, the sidewalk repairs in Zone 2C, which is last year's uh, program. Whalers Cove traffic signals poles were yeah. delivered this past Monday. The Public Works Department is scheduling their installation and all remaining work to complete that signal pro project. Once the poles are installed, it will take about three weeks to complete the work, and the signals will then be placed in flash mode for about 10 days uh, prior to activate, activation to try to give people a chance to acclimate to uh, the changes there. We are also currently advertising for bids for the two-town ditch restoration and the Springbrook Gardens Park combined project. We decided it was uh, probably 
uh, an opportunity to save some money to bid those projects together since they're very similar type of uh, construction activities. Bids will be opened on October 17th. We expect to have a contractor selected and a recommendation for City Council ready for the first meeting in November. The Army Corps permit uh, for the two-town project is expected to be issued this week. Wow. If it isn't, I'll be telling you about that two weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> the completion date for the combined project is scheduled for September 29th, 2018, but of course the two-town work is expected to begin this fall and will be uh, completed much earlier. On Monday through Wednesday of this week, the staff at Blackbrook has been aerating our greens and tees, and the helium of the greens takes approximately a week or so. Uh, also, we'll be reseeding the amphitheater grounds uh, this later this week as well. Uh, the Ignite the Ice Back to School Bash is this Friday, October 6th, from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. Come celebrate the start of the new school year with music, prizes, and skating. Movie night at the amphitheater on Saturday, October 7th will feature Lady and the Tramp starting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we remind people to bring their own blankets, lawn chairs, and refreshments, and then we'll have two more Saturdays uh, after that. Again, these are all family movies. We'll finish on October 21st, Mr. Kaminsky? 28th. The last? 28th. Okay. Um, 28th? 21st, I think. 21st. Yeah, 21st which will be um, The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is actually a Halloween movie. <laughs> We're planning on partnering up with the uh, library system to do, I think, donuts and cider and uh, some other fun stuff for kids out there as, as a nod to Halloween, uh, which is a good lead into my uh, next comment here. Trick or Treat in the City of Menor will take place on Halloween night, Tuesday, October 31st, from 6 to 8 p.m., as we have done in the past. And then finally, uh, we have uh, one relocation of a business in town that I wanted to bring to your attention. Noosa Bistro is moved now to 9500 Diamond Center Drive, and they are open now, right, Mr. Yes, Trump? Excited about that. And we have two new businesses to announce, All City Candy at 7441 Mentor Avenue and Vipassana at 8500 Station Street. So we appreciate their investment in our community and wish them great success. That's all. Thank you. Before we proceed, um, I'd like to take a moment to recognize a guest with us this evening. We have a scout. Would you like to share your name? And are you working on a specific project? Yeah, uh, I'm Grady Snyder from Section 75 out of uh, Um I'm working on a project right now. Uh, and great. Well, thank you. Good Welcome to Council. Good luck. Clerk's correspondence. Council is in receipt of a new liquor permit request for Center Menor LLC DBA <coughs> Kephart Fisher at 8807 Menor Avenue. Council also is in receipt of Menor Municipal Court month end report for August 2017. Commission committee reports. Council is in receipt of the Community Arts Commission August 3rd, 2017 and Municipal Planning Commission September 7th, 2017. Old business. Madam President, I guess I'll ask Mr. Sweeter. Um, phase two of Midland uh, storm sewer, do you have a date on that? Uh, <clears throat> as of now, the storm sewer is complete. Uh, the uh, resurfacing is also complete. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, lawn restoration that needs to take place, and that's that'll probably be two to three weeks to complete. To go out onto Route 20, you mean, and, and start that the, the second phase of that oh, connection? The, that's what I meant. Oh, I, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, phase two. Uh, uh, would be uh, a part of the budget uh, budgeting process this year as far as okay. scheduling. I think we originally had it scheduled for 2018. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and just one more thing. Um, the lights at Garfield, uh, are, are they, have they been working on those a long time? Are those getting close to being uh, connected? I, I, I think they were boring today. I, I saw them boring under the road, I think. Correct. Um, uh, they're, they're scheduled to be uh, uh, energized tomorrow. The new, right. new oh, fantastic. Thank you. Any other old business? New business. Oh, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Martin. I'd like to say happy birthday to our fire chief. Oh, happy oh, birthday. Wow. 39 years old. 39. 49. <laughs> 39. 39. Thank you. Thank 39 you. and holding. Thank you. And uh, secondly, um, and I just uh, saw this now, uh, email sent uh, for the uh, Tribe series, when we'll find out tonight who the Tribe plays, but uh, game one that takes place at, uh, on Thursday at uh, 730 uh, the national anthem will be sung by Scott Posey from Lake Catholic High School. He's, wow. a, he's a teacher oh. of Lake Catholic, so nice. congratulations to him. Thank you. Any other business? Any 
other new business? No. Okay, persons before council, we have one person this evening. Please come to the microphone and identify yourself in your name and address, please. Good evening, Deborah McCauley. Uh, my address is 6730 Farmingdale Lane in Mentor. Uh, I'm here this evening for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I want to clear up any misconceptions. I do not work on Osborne Farm. I was a previous employee, and I chose to stand for what I believe in, and I no longer work there. I choose to stand still. I'm standing for what is right and for what I believe in, and I'm standing for those that cannot stand for themselves. The horses, the eagles, multiple other creatures on the farm, fox, deer, squirrels, I stand for trees, the pond, the rich acreage. I also stand for some inanimate objects, such as the historic buildings rich with the past, present, and future, or the unique well pump buried far back on the property, and by the way, is the only source of water on the entire 90-acre farm. I want to talk tonight specifically about issue number five, which will be worded somewhat similarly to this shall 4.25 acres at the southeast corner of State Route 615 and Interstate 90 be rezoned from C1 Conservation to B3 Interchange? My answer is no, and this is why. This is the Osborne Farms. This is a beautiful, well-kept, historic farm that you pass when you're entering 90 east off of Route 615. It's a 90-acre farm, and it was zoned conservation for good reason. By method of what seems to me as political trickery, after nearly a year's silence, Rick Osborne suddenly proposed, nearly 45 days prior to the election, the equestrian dream. The last we heard was that no matter what happened to the rezoning of the hotel, the Osbournes were getting out of the horse business. It's a flyer program from the Lake County Fair. The Osborne family sponsored the harness racing and they sponsored this race, $11,500 purse for one race. I bring this up because I don't really believe that they were ever planning on getting out of the horse business, and that was only said conveniently. Um, my stronger point is that conveniently, they're talking about the equestrian dream, just in time to encourage minor voters to, repass, or to pass the zoning and push through the erecting of a hotel. And I'm going to say this with extreme sarcasm. This is just what we need in Menor. More hotels, more people, more traffic. The equestrian dream is nothing other than smoke and mirrors to make a bad decision seem like a good one. It is trickery. And just as last year we were told the horse business was going to cease, this year we we're being told something else and next year we'll be told something else again. This idea, if it were ever to come to fruition, it'll be far from a dream, it'll be a nightmare. I've been actively pursuing a permit to ride in a peaceful protest with horses on horseback. After looking at the area, going, speaking to various people, I've decided that this is absolutely dangerous. There is nowhere to stand on horseback that I would not be putting my fellow riders and horses in a dangerous situation. So I've let that go. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not pursuing the permit any longer because it's too dangerous. If I feel this way now about a few horses and a few people prior to any construction, God forbid that any of the 12 five-acre properties that are proposed to cater to horse owners, God forbid they should ever have children and we have a busing situation on State Route 615. Um, any horse owner is going to tell you that a 12, five-acre farms, one after another after another, that's not a dream, particularly about a half a mile from the back of a hotel in Interstate 90. Horse people don't want that. We want trails. We want land. Um, so in, in conclusion, uh, well, I will say this. There's already been two failed horse lover communities uh, one was in Kirtland, it's called Bridlehurst, never came to fruition, and one Red Raider in Novelty, Ohio, failed miserably. Um, in conclusion, the Osborne Farm will stand, just as I am, for many, many years to come if it's remained zoned in the conservation uh, district. 
It will remain the beautiful, well-kept, historic farm that you see when you're entering Route 90 east uh, from 615. Divided, the Osborne Farms will fall. So you decide, voters, should Osborne Farms stand or fall? If you want to save Osborne Farms, vote no to rezoning 4.25 acres, and it's actually 4.235 acres to be exact. There is a political action committee. Uh, it's entitled Mentor Citizens for Responsible Zoning. I am not speaking on behalf of them this evening, but there is a committee out there if anyone is interested. That's all I have to say. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Gentlemen? Um, could, Mr. Could, could, could I offer a yes. little insight into referendum zoning, though, just so that you know uh, people understand? Um, and, and, and I know that this has got to be a bit confusing. You know, you would think that if the voters say no to rezoning, that that's the end of the story. Um, it's not. Um, you, I think you can bet that if the voters turn it down, um, that particular issue, we'll probably get sued. Um, it's really no different than council if it had turned it down um, versus the voters. Um, and and it, it's, it's just uh, uh, what we, you know, learned early on. It, we have a representative government. Um, so if council said no, that was because council acted on behalf of the voters. If the voters say no, um, it, it's really no different than council saying no. And what happens then under our form of government, you know, we have three branches and uh, we have the judicial branch. And the ju judicial branch um, it can say whether or not the voters or council were right in turning down a rezoning. So it's, it's not as cut and dry as, as you might think and um, there is an expense that comes with a lawsuit of that type. And, um, you know, so it, it, just saying no doesn't, doesn't make the, the issue go away. Um, it, it, it just kicks it to a different day and probably uh, puts it into court uh, where there'll be a lot of money spent. And um, a judge could say that we were wrong, uh, that the voters were wrong. Um, it, it, it's not unusual, and um, I can tell you that, um, you know, if, if I were representing the, the property owner, I would say this to the judge. Judge, um, the city put in a brand new interchange, and it goes right next to my property. As a matter of fact, the ramp to the interchange abuts my property. The city has interchange zoning. Um, you know, so they could have asked for interchange zoning. They could have asked for B2. But the fact is, um, the, the use directly adjacent to this property changed after a 30-some year effort of the city to get the money to put in a new interchange. Um, so it, when you look at the issue in referendum zoning, it's not as simple as, oh, the voters said no. There, there's always another step. And I just wanted to point that out. I'm sorry if I rattled on too long, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not a done deal if the voters say no. It, it's really no different than uh, Newell Creek. Uh, the voters said no to that too. And we ended up in court. And um, you know, you, 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 the council tries to do the best it can to uh, have growth, uh, but also manage it. But sometimes people don't agree with what council wants or what the voters want, but ultimately it's the courts that get the last say. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. So moved.